Hi everyone, this is Dan Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com. Welcome to the Futures Market Outlook for the week of August 5th through the 10th, 2018. In terms of economic releases, this is going to be a pretty quiet week. We just have as the market mover, the crude oil inventories at 10.30 on Wednesday. Uh, and we do have uh, the PPI, uh, US PPI that is on August the 9th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. And we also have uh, the CPI and the core CPI scheduled for 8.30 a.m. on Friday. So relatively quiet uh, week in terms of economic releases, but we do have a very active earnings week. Uh, we do have a lot of stocks reporting earnings. Uh, earning season is in full swing. Uh, and uh, let's begin by taking a look at the major market indices, futures indices. We're going to begin with the mini Dow weekly chart. As usual, we're going to begin our weekly analysis. Last week, we've created this, let's say, call it pin right here. If we trade above this prior high, uh, that has been the issue uh, for some time now, and it has been creating resistance actually since March. Uh, the second tap was on uh, the week of July 23rd, uh, and it is the general area of 25,550. If we manage to trade above 550 zone, we're not that far away. Uh, we may release more buying pressure. That may push the price higher back into the 25,800. We have been monitoring this in the trading room for some time. So last week, last week we had a very choppy trading week. Uh, obviously, we've traded, uh, we've traded lower, then we bounced back up. We've traded again lower. Again, this is a bull sandwich right here. Uh, we were waiting for a break over 25,486. That break didn't come. The price continued to push lower into an area of minor support from prior price action. And in fact, we revisited a low from May 22nd pulled into the 20 SMA and reversed, created again another pin and move, moved higher on Friday. Friday, we had a really nice follow through uh, to the upside, creating a high in the market uh, of 25,437. Uh, today's uh, today's price action, very quiet to begin the week. Uh, we may have some positive continuation higher since we're trading into a continuation pattern. Uh, 25,470 to 25,480 25, is going to be the breakout zone if the price is going to manage to advance and digest this prior resistance zone, we may have room to continue higher back into the 25,550 and 25,600. Let's take a look at the m and SMP. The m and SMP, we're going to begin with the weekly chart, obviously. Let's go to the weekly chart right here. And um, the weekly chart is into a continuation pattern, uh, much more, uh, uh, a, a, a lot more stronger than the m and Dow. Uh, we're actually triggering a continuation higher as we're speaking right now, and we just took out Friday's high. So therefore, we look for a higher positioning. We are trading already in a trader roll void that may push the price back up to its high. And uh, the high that was actually set on, on January, the old time high of 2878.5. So we do have a lot of room uh, for a continuation back into the 2880. And the, the price velocity may take, uh, may take it uh, right into this area since we'll, we're trading into this tradable void. Let's take a look at the daily chart and see what we have in store. We are still up against a lot of resistance at the 2847 to 2850 zone. If the price is going to re get, get rejected at this point, we can expect a pullback back into the 2830s. If the price is going to grind slowly higher and try to push through the 2850, a blast over 2850 may carry the price into, and I'm going to be talking about day trading targets as well as swing trading targets. So 2846 is going to be, uh, is going to be the immediate uh, price. Uh, price continuation, uh, price target, and uh, 2850, and the next target is going to be 2852, and this is for continuation for the current, uh, for the current swing 
that uh, the price is literally trading into. Uh, I want to take a quick look on the hourly chart right here so you can see that we had the pullback on Friday in the overnight trading session, accelerated a little higher, uh, getting ready for the uh, economic events that we've had on Friday, uh, testing support right here, actually establishing a higher low, which was actually setting the tone for this continuation higher, the price released higher right after uh, pivoting at 12 o'clock and release more buying pressure in towards the end of the trading session, uh, actually making new high. So new high right now, uh, uh, based on uh, ba based on the one hour chart and obviously taking out the Friday's high. So again, the price may continue higher. Uh, we spoke about the targets. Also, I want to bring up very quickly the monthly chart because we're trading. We're trading uh, in the month of August. Uh, we already have uh, about three ta three trading days. We had one, two, three, and then four, five for the weekend, and then we're starting trading again. And the the monthly chart suggests that if we break above this prior uh, prior high of last month's high, which is not that far away, we've talked about this uh, when we looked at the daily charts. Uh, it's it's a very strong pullback buy from. Uh, any point of view. So when we look at the hourly chart, daily chart, weekly chart, that is considerable uh, strength. Uh, obviously, a break uh, can support, and I forgot to mention this, and we're going to go to the uh, to the daily chart once again. Once again, support for the mini S&P is this line in the sand, the 2800. Above 2800, we're going to see more bullish price action. Below 2800, we're going to uh, be shifting towards more bearish price action. All right, let's take a look at NASDAQ and uh, NASDAQ on the daily chart. Positioning with a pullback buy into last week uh, it was the most uh, aggressive uh, index. And uh, in fact, it was one of uh, the most accelerated runs from all the indices. Uh, the price is trading right now above the 20 SMA. Uh, the new support level is the 73.60. We've seen the continuation higher over 74.15. We have room for a continuation higher back into the 37 uh, for a target of 74.50 to 65. And then if we release this last pivot of resistance pressure, then we may continue higher back into the 75, 75, 30, which is the old time high for uh, NASDAQ. From the weekly perspective, we're triggering a weekly buy. So this is a weekly buy signal, very strong for a continuation for at least 100 to 130 points higher into the 7,500. So this is a really mild pullback into the uh, 10 EMA and reversal uh, with a trigger uh, over the weekly chart. The monthly chart, very strong from, from its continuation higher from the 68.69. Uh, obviously, it's trading in uh, in in an upwards direction. It's almost going vertical right here. It has the most accelerated move since, uh, this in, well, obviously all uh, 2000, 2017 and 2018. Very, very bullish. Even uh, when we had that uh, volatility spike and uh, when we had the retracement, the steeper retracement, but that steeper retracement, uh, and again, I said it many, many times, and I've repeated this as it was happening in the trading room, as scary as it is, this pullback, uh, I still see it as a pullback buy, and I often repeat it in the trading room, shorting should not be an option until we have uh, the correlation of price, and so far, the price is still moving to the upside. Uh, monthly chart, very bullish. The weekly chart, like I've mentioned before, if we trade above this uh, 74, uh, 7418 zone, 7420, we are going to accelerate higher into the 7500, 7530. Uh, let's take a look at RTY. RTY has been the one index that has been lagging and needs that extra uh, extra push for a continuation higher. And in fact, looking at the price action of RTY, it was the only one that was not giving us a full blast in all the indices. It was not giving us the green lights uh, to uh, continue higher throughout this week. So I'm sorry, last week. So last week was a little bit more challenging to trade from the day trading perspective. perspective. Uh, so what we have from the monthly chart, uh, uh, prior monthly chart, is we still have a continuation higher since the pullback 
uh, since the pullback buy that happened in March and the reversal that happened in April. Uh, we've had one, two, three, four uh, continuous bars to the upside. This is only three day, a uh, three day candle, still very, very young, but we still need to prove a lot in order to continue higher. And I think, I, I still think that 1700 is going to be that line in the sand that is going to give us more clarity as to which direction the Russell is going to move into. Let's move on to the weekly chart. We already have an alert for 1689.70 on the top of this candle for a continuation higher. So far, the price is trading within last week's range, but still looking positive. Uh, the price opened. It is trading right now above the 10 EMA. If we trigger throughout the night into tomorrow's trading session over 1689.5, I set my alert for 70. That's going to be more um of uh, of an aggressive move to the upside obviously 1700 is not going to be an issue so we're going to be looking for from the day trading perspective pullback buys all the way into higher targets all the way into 1720 so we're going to have uh, and again it's one of these indices that is going to move in 10 point increments uh, so I'm going to be looking for the 1680 level if we break above the 1680 level uh, any pullback is going to be seen viable for a continuation higher. Uh, here's the thing. If we, uh, if the price is going to prove that, you know what, it's not going to accelerate. It is going to move a little lower. It's going to be sluggish. And uh, honestly, Russell has been very choppy into last week with not a clear directional bias. I would say that I was more bearish on Russell than anything else. Uh, so, in fact, we did have a short trade in Russell. But... Uh, the way we look at the charts right now is that we've peaked uh, uh, we've peaked at the 1720 zone um, back in June, pull back into the 10 EMA, reversal, and we didn't quite challenge the prior high. So we've uh, made lower highs in this uh, uh, in this pattern on the weekly chart. So if the price is going to continue to trade lower, I will be very bearish under 1650. So I would be more bearish on the 1650. And here's my reason. Uh, looking at the daily chart, you can see the price development a little better than the weekly chart. So we have a little bit more clarity. We have the high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high right here. So the price obviously needs to trade a little bit above these moving averages in order to accelerate higher. And I think that I'm going to be very neutral on the Russell, not going to take any kind of action until it breaks this 1689 zone. 1689 to 1689.50, it's going to be the, the line in the sand that the price is going to get rejected at this point. This is going to be the turnaround. So this is going to be the point where we're going to start looking bearish. Uh, in Russell, but if we blast through the 1689, we may have the power to go full throttle to the 1700, 1710, 1720, 1725. So we're gonna move, um, uh, we're gonna move in uh, in about 10 point increments into that 1720 zone. 1725 is gonna be again. And when I'm uh, when I'm analyzing these uh, uh, these charts, I'm looking for the day trading and the swing trading perspective. All right, so uh, with that being said, uh, let's continue with gold. Uh, gold has been extremely choppy to say the least. I do have uh, I do have a swing position. I have added into the 27. Unfortunately for me, I had a really nice four hour reversal on Friday, but it happened very early. So I was sleeping at that time. If I had seen this, then I would have definitely uh, uh, added again at the 1216. All right, so moving back to the daily chart, and then we're going to navigate a little bit uh, towards a higher time frame. So uh, with that in mind, 1228, uh, 1220, if the price is going to rise again into the 1228 zone, I think we still have a pretty good chance of, 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 of a continuation higher. We still have not taken out this prior low, and this is from July 19th. So we're still trying to stabilize within this area. Um, 
honestly, the way it looks right now, it needs a little bit more confirmation than what we have for that long positioning. And uh, it, the price totally needs to uh, trade again above the 1237 area. We talked about it last week. That was my trigger. I got one position there, one lot. So I've got, uh, so I'm partially in at that price. I've added at the 27. And as long as we're going to be holding these lows into the between 1200 and 1210, I'm still going to be looking for at least two more ads, or I'm going to be looking for a break above again the 1237, 1238 and a push higher and i'm going to be uh adding and reducing along the way all right monthly chart uh again we do have we still need to trade uh like i said again uh, first of all the first clue is going to be oh uh it's the the first uh uh not clue but i would say uh the first uh, indication for price reversal is obvious obviously going to be again our former uh, trigger area into the 37 to 38 but if the more we advance higher we're going to be looking for a target into the 66 now i really like the way the 30 minute is positioning right now and i know it's still very very early but still price is price and uh you know we still look at chart patterns and i do like the fact that if the price is not going to get rejected into the 23 to 24 we may have a really nice reversal here that may carry the price back up into my ad area. Let's take a look at oil. Uh, oil uh, has been, let's see, let's move to the daily charts. Okay. All right. Daily chart, and again, we're into a big chop chop. Uh, and again, this is more of a, um, uh, I would say, day trading environment, but at the same time, very choppy day trading environment. Uh, the, this market is not going anywhere. Oil is not crude, and crude especially is not going anywhere. It has been it, trading into this uh, uh, range, if you will, very, very sloppy range. So you can see that last week after making a high over 70s, uh, it, we got the pullback and uh, the 6750 did not hold, revisited the uh, 67 zone again reversed back into the high of the 69 towards 69.50 so 69.33 and it's still meandering here let's not ignore the fact that we're trading below the 20 below the 10 and below the 50 right now so if we get a again a breakdown below the 67 so we may still have room for a continuation lower the hourly chart is pointing lower at this time because of the lower highs and the lower lows that we have on our uh, one hour charts. Uh, the only issue that I have with shorting oil here is the fact that we're trying to hold a reversal. So the price is still trading on the one hour chart still above uh, this 50 SMA. If we do not trade above $69, I'm not going to be trading oil. I'm going to be looking for a full blast over 69, ideally over 69.50, and then going to be looking for a 69. I don't want to be a guinea pig in CL. And when I trade CL, I like to uh, I like to trade the 30 minute and the one hour. This is my personal preference with oil because I like to go for a little bit uh, wider targets. So I'll be, I'm gonna be waiting for price to trade over 69 and then I'm gonna take a decision. The way it is positioned right here, uh, the 30 minute and the one hour looks like it really wants to push a little bit lower. Keep in mind, we're gonna be trading into uh, very sustainable areas of support from prior price action. Uh, and also we're gonna be hitting this 50 SMA here. So oil remains in um, um, trouble land, if you will monthly chart however the monthly chart still has support all the way into 62 dollars from this prior high here uh so that is all the way back in 2015 but uh if we manage to hold this 200 moving simple moving average at the 6650 zone and if we try to push a little bit higher you can see that right now the price is it's still into prior months uh high low and so this is july okay and this is june all right so we're still trading within these ranges right here so we don't have a clear directional bias as to where oil would like to move uh weekly chart 
Uh, obviously, I'm going to be bullish over $70. There's no question. 70s to 70.50. Uh, I'm going to even put a quick alert at this zone just to give me a heads up. And I'm going to be uh, actually, actually, the weekly chart, 69, well, I would say 60, 60, 66.90 to 67, again, support here. So here's what I see. If we get a pullback back into this level, let's watch it. We may we may land into that area. Let me show you a little bit below. All right. So if we trade below into this area, we're going to watch for quick reversals, 15, 30 minute, one hour possible ads that may push the price again into this uh, into the 68 and into the 70. But I'm not going to be um, stubborn. OK, because if this and this is a very solid area that's 67, also psychological 67, but also comes from this prior pivot high from back in January. So if this support level is not going to hold, I'm going to be looking for a short as well. So if my long is not going to work, okay, keep in mind, it's going to be aggressive with an aggressive reversal off the 15, 30 minute and one hour. And if that reversal probably going to add that those three lots, I'm going to try the 15 minute first. Um, I'm going to add on my 30 minute, going to add on my hour. And then, uh, then I'm probably going to see targets along the way into the, uh, into the 60, 68, 68, 50. So where it is trading right now and possibly higher for a continuation into the 70. I'm not going to take any decision right now because we're trading exactly within last week's range. So you can see that pretty much this is kind of like a doji here. So a lot of, uh, a, a lot of price, uh, uh, the, the price is really neutral right now, okay? So it still hasn't taken any decision just yet. All right, so let's continue with some of our commodities. And I did receive a lot of emails uh, through this weekend uh, and uh, to take a look at bonds. So we're gonna take a look at bonds. Uh, I like to swing trade bonds, don't like to day trade bonds, but uh, here's uh, my analysis on bonds. Weekly, if we trigger above 143.15, uh, we're going to be heading higher. In fact, I'm going to uh, just put it a little alert right here. Okay, so we're going to be heading a little higher. Overhead resistance from these uh, two moving averages, the 10 exponential uh, and also the 20 simple moving average at the 144 zone. So the, the, we're not going to be looking for a big, big target as we're moving higher. We're going to be looking as we're hitting these moving averages to lift our stop to a break even level uh, for uh, for a more dynamic push to the upside. Uh, push to the upside, we're going to be looking for a target into the 145 for bonds. All right, let's take a quick look on the daily chart. And the daily chart suggests that chop, chop, okay? This is something that I don't like to trade, okay? Uh, so the weekly chart, because it is in play, we're going to be looking and having the patience to wait for these levels. In the meantime, guess what? I'm not going to do anything. So let the price, if the price is going to, uh, uh, if the price is going to uh, uh, lift all the way into the 143 to 143 uh, uh, 16, uh, then we're going to take a decision that I don't like the way it is positioned right now. All right. Let's take a look at natural gas. This was uh, again a, uh, one of uh, one of the requests that came. And if you have a special request, just email me at info at tradeoutloud.com, and I will definitely include my take on the futures index or stock if or an ETF uh, in my next uh, video. All right, let's begin with the weekly chart. The weekly chart is into a continuation higher. We have uh, reversed off uh, the two seventy zone. Uh, and in fact, we're trying to clear out all these resistances from uh, all the all these all this resistance from these moving averages. And if we're going to digest above these moving averages, we may have a clear shot all the way into the three dollars and a little bit above the three dollars into the three oh four to three oh five. So natural gas looks uh, looks good for a continuation higher right now. Let's take a look at copper. Copper was also one commodity uh, that was requested by you guys. Uh, and uh, right now, not doing anything. We're trading within and inside 
uh, with inside week we're trading within last week's parameters and last week we traded uh, within the prior week's parameters and there's uh, so on all right so we th th one thing is definite is that we have a temporary support that was set at 2.6739 uh, and uh, I think that we got to go a little bit, uh, yeah, so <laughs> things are a little bit more clear when we move to the monthly chart. So for me, this is going to be interesting if it moves over 280, okay? So 280, going to set my alert at 280. Okay, let me just put 280 here. Let me just do this. All right, this is going to be my uh, interest area into the 280. And if we're going to reverse trigger above 380 areas, so I really want to digest this uh, uh, this prior pivot high. And if the price is going to maintain uh, at the 280 zone, we may have a continuation higher back into the $3. All right, uh, let's move on to ZW, which is wheat futures. Okay, so let's take a look at wheat. Wheat, really nice rounded bottom. Retest with a higher low, continuation higher. And so far, we have traded into the first resistance area that we've had in a long time, and that is from last July, so from, uh, from a year ago. So you can see that we've peaked in July. So last year, June, July, we're bullish, and we had June, which was like, so and so and then July with a little bit of push higher but again we did have uh, the China tariffs and this was one of the reasons why we had this uh, uh, price action um, in uh, in uh, wheat futures all right so the monthly chart looks for a continuation definitely higher the weekly chart has progressed higher and we may see higher targets um, also I do want to mention that on the monthly chart we've hit the 89 simple moving average which I'm using for higher time frames and for my position trades and also for my some of my swing trades if I'm looking to uh, for higher targets uh, but we definitely looks for a continuation higher uh, right now the daily chart is uh, interesting and wheat is something that you like to trade the retracement that came on Friday came exactly to this prior pivot high. That was from May 29th. Uh, let's watch and see if this uh, five, uh, 554 is going to hold. Uh, so far, uh, we're going to be, and I'm going to be watching the one hour in wheat. If we're going to get a reversal over uh, 568 to 569.5, I'm going to uh, I'm going to be looking for reversal higher based on the 1 hour chart. All right, let's continue with heating oil. Uh we're going to look at heating oil and gasoline as well. And let's begin uh with the monthly chart. So new candles, right? Fresh new candles uh 3 days old and uh if we get a push a little higher into the 222, I would be more optimistic about uh, uh about a reversal to the upside. The weekly chart still suggests a lot of chop right here. And in my opinion, we need to trade the price needs the 215 and needs to sustain the 215 level in order to progress higher because we do have a lot of resistance at that 215 from this prior pivot high that was established in January. January, we had the volatility that we had the push to the downside. We're really trying to establish an uptrend. This is the, this is the low. So we had the low, higher low, and we're trying to establish that higher low low. So let's watch the 215 zone and also more importantly that 222 zone that I've mentioned but we're going to be looking at smaller time frames obviously uh daily time frame we do have uh the reversal at 213.8 and also the one hour chart keep in mind it's a little thin uh, a little bit on the thin side when you're moving uh when you're moving on lower time frames but i think a big factor is going to be this 200 sma because as long as that 200 sma is going to be at the 214.5 level uh, the more we're going to get that was going to radiate that bearishness towards price. So it's going to keep the price below this uh, below this area. I'm going to be looking for a reversal. Obviously, keep in mind the 214, 214 to 15 level is going to be on watch. All right, let's begin with our uh, RB, our Bob right here, gasoline futures. 
and uh, let's uh, start with the weekly chart. Weekly chart kind of bearish right now, trading within a, inside a range. I would like to see it above the 212 area. And actually, I'm going to set an alert for this. Uh, and uh, unless it breaks above this this level right here, I'm not going to be interested in. Uh, I like the fact that two dollars is holding. So as long as two dollars is holding, we're still maintaining this uptrend, and we're continuing uh, to have higher lows and higher highs. So this is very encouraging for RBOB. In fact, I do like RBOB better. Gasoline futures uh, way way better than um, um, than um, um, heating oil or even CL. All right, that's crude. All right, let's take a look at something more optimistic here, and uh, this is uh, this is corn. I do like the way corn is positioning right now. So corn on the weekly chart is actually into a continuation higher. The daily chart looks bullish, and this is a really nice base. As long as 378 is going to hold, we may look for a positioning higher uh, into the 388. And a break actually over 387 to 388 is going to push the price higher back into the 400 and 410 zone. So this is uh, this is corn. All right, let's move on to another commodity. All right, this is feeder cattle. I've been in feeder cattle in a trade and this is a position position trade for me so when i'm looking at these uh um w w typically when i'm looking at commodities i'm looking more um uh in terms of position trading rather than swing trading so uh, uh feeder cattle it's been a trade that i've been in i've added to that position has hit my target of 155 right here uh, and I still hold uh, one lot of uh, feeder cattle, uh, and I'm looking for a higher target uh, in feeder cattle. In fact, I do like the fact that we're getting the pullback buy off the 50 SMA uh, with obviously, again, another target into the 55s. Uh, and if we break it, uh, over this 155, I'm gonna be looking for a target into the 157. So this is gonna be my next target zone um my next target zone uh for um uh for um feeder cattle and also back into the what 60s okay so i'm still holding a position uh in feeder cattle all right let's take a look next okay let's take a look at live cattle all right so i'm gonna start right here with the daily chart we've rolled into a new contract and we really are breaking above the range, okay? Went for the gap fill, really nice price action uh, in the last few days, went for a complete uh, uh, for a complete reversal. We still have the 115 zone. I don't have a trade in live cattle, okay? I did not take, I did not like the risk. I think it. we, we had a pretty wide risk and I don't like to give that really, really wide, wide risk. Uh, but nonetheless, and the one thing that kept me away from live cattle is the fact that we broke this support level of 103, uh, and then I would have, uh, I, I would have had to uh, give my stop room into the 94s. Okay, so that 94s and then 92s. So I really didn't want to do that. So that's fine. I'm going to wait for it to grind up a little bit. Maybe it's going to digest these highs and I'm going to be looking for a pullback. Nonetheless, really, really nice price action when we're looking at the hourly chart with a pullback and buy release. And it's definitely looking higher for a target into the one. Uh, let's see now. The targets, 113, 113.50 and all the way into the 115. So LE looking really, really nice right here. Okay, um, one more. Okay, soybean meal. Okay, soybean meal. I know that some of you have requested, uh, have requested uh, this chart. Uh, I like this hot. So I like this pattern that is setting up on the monthly chart. And again, these are more position trades than anything else. Uh, you can also trade them as swing trades. Uh, these are some ideas that I'm looking at. The high 343, uh, 343.20, I'm going to set an alert. It, I'm going to set it uh, a little bit ahead of that point 20. 
gonna create it right here if we break above this it's gonna be a monthly reversal with really nice profit target zones uh the first target is gonna be into the 357 375 and then we're gonna be looking in the upper 380s so this is gonna be a really nice uh pattern uh for me uh zm all right uh and last but not least zs okay so since we're into the soybean this is soybean futures soybean futures i had an alert here um from uh last week at the 9 45 this is the monthly no oh, let's go to the weekly uh i think that yeah, we're still not ready for a continuation higher here uh i still think that in terms of a longer term trade uh it's not quite ready yet however the daily chart looks a little a lot more different uh we've had the sharp uh reversal uh, from a 26.25 we're pushing higher pull back by right here that triggered last uh friday so on friday and we're getting a really nice reversal we're really i'm gonna be watching it because it tapped onto onto this 10 ema and it reversed really really nicely here and i see a quick profit target into the 920s so um once again the trigger is 903 to 904 uh it is trading right now at 904 uh the risk for this trade is 880 and uh we're gonna be looking for a profit target of 922 to all the way back into that 950 and remember the 950 has uh, 950 represents resistance and that comes from uh, uh from january so that is let me show you weekly weekly all right so it comes from this prior pivot low right here, okay? All right, guys, this is all for now. Thanks so much for tuning in. I know this video was a little bit longer, 36 minutes so far. Uh, enjoy the week, stay safe. Remember, risk management uh, and position sizing are some of, uh, uh, some of the most important keys in trading. So it, it is even more important than finding entry stops and targets. Uh, so position sizing is what's going to make or break your account. This is all for now. My name is Anka Metcalf with Trade Out Live. If you want to trade with us, I run a trading room every single day from Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, give us a try if you trade futures. We also call swing trading in stocks. And uh, if you uh, would like more information, you could visit our website, tradeoutloud.com, under the trading room tab, or you can email us at info at tradeoutloud.com. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great week and good luck. Make money.